July. Well, hello and welcome. I'm Wendy Rose Williams. And with Greg Kirk, we'd like to uh, welcome you to the Waking Up Spiritually podcast. We're so glad you're here. And here's our holiday edition. Oh, my goodness. It's the end of the year already. Uh, we're all saying, how did that happen? <laughs> So, so glad that you could join us and Waking Up Spiritually is archived at wakingupspiritually.com so you can check in there for past episodes. And I am a past life energy healer. I help people release energy that no longer serves them. Things like anxiety, depression, stuck creativity, PTSD, just things that you do not need or want anymore, but can just be challenging to figure out how do I let go of this? How do I free myself up and, and raise my vibration and frequency? How can I feel better so that you can feel happy and healthy and feel that you're living your purpose? So my website is wendyrosewilliams.com and I'll turn it over to Greg to introduce himself and to introduce today's topic. Hi everyone, I'm Greg Kirk. You can come see what I do at gregkirk.com. That's spelled G-R-E-G-G. K-I-R-K.com. I'm, I'm also an energy healer and worker. I work in the, with uh, also help people with physical uh, infirmities and ailments, chronic illness, as well as some emotional um, stuckness. And it, my favorite thing is to work with people on energy healing. So remote sessions and in-person sessions, we look for blocks and we uh, try to remove them. Some of the things that um, I look for, we're, we're gonna be focusing on today's topic. So uh, one other thing I just wanted to mention is I also run online group, online group healing circles, and you can go to my website and check the events link, link. If you wanna come join us, it's only $20. We do those every Sunday at noon Eastern time, and it's through Zoom, you can join and, I lead us on a meditation, uh, guided meditation that turns usually into a spiritual adventure. <laughs> so um, come join us there. Uh, and then in person in the Connecticut area where I live, we've been doing fire circles, but because it's been getting colder, we've been doing, I'm calling them salt circles. So we're doing them in, in the a local salt cave uh, in uh, Woodbury, Connecticut. So having a lot of fun with all that stuff. So come check that out. So today I want to, um, Wendy and I talked about this. We We've done a couple of episodes on things like energy management and so forth, but today uh, we're really focusing on an aspect of energy management, which is energy leak, energy leaks. So our topic today is managing energy leaks. So let me get this. And Greg's shared. going to bring up a PowerPoint. And for those of you who are listening to us as a podcast, that's fantastic. But if you want to go to our YouTube channel or want to go to wakingupspiritually.com or to our Facebook group, which is also named wakingupspiritually.com, there you're able to see the podcast as a visual uh, with the PowerPoint that Greg is bringing up. Okay. See that okay? Yes, that looks great, Greg. Okay. I, one, I just want to say one quick thing about the visual. Of course, this will be lost on the people just listening to the podcast, but the visual on, on the cover of today's deck is something, I, I, this is a found um, piece of artwork I found recently, and it's exactly what I see when uh, I'm doing energy work on people, where uh, we open up the root chakra and connect it to the crystalline center of the earth, and we open up the, um, the crown chakra and pull down radiant light energy from the sun. And uh, oh, this how is, this fantastic. Is a perfect what representation of what I, I see with a lot of people I, I do work with. So I'm gonna say just, that's a great visualization of a lot of people will refer to the great central sun. And if you've yeah. never seen what that looks like, um, <laughs> check us check us out at wakingupspiritually.com. Right, exactly. So um, what are energy le leaks and what are their symptoms? So. They can manifest into physical physical uh, losing that fatigue feeling or low energy that comes and goes based on your interactions with particular people, places, or things, or lately devices. So, uh, if you notice a particular interaction with a person, um, or even just a, a place, like uh, I talked to a lot of people who go to, they, they work in a hostile work environment, so. When they go to work, they feel like they're under attack all day long. They come home, they're exhausted. This, these are pretty typical energy leak 
types of situations. It could also be a physical, physical thing going on in the environment as well. Things like um, uh, sick building syndrome. So if you've got a building that has a lot of mold or chemical leaks or bad lighting or things like that, um, can also contribute to the energy leaking situation. So long-term energy leaks can pre precipitate physical infirmity. So if it's just energy, that by themselves, the stress of dealing with people who are sucking the quote unquote life out of you um, can start to cause physical manifestations that are, are, are not good. So there's four types of stress that can cause energy leaks, physical stress and trauma, mental, emotional stress and trauma, and environmental stress and trauma, all these things we just talked about, but also psychic or energy attacks. So these are, we'll talk about them in a little more detail uh, in, in a coming slide, but these are sometimes, these are things that are, it's not your fault. <laughs> in other words, you know, if you're, if you figure out, all right, I, I'm, I'm fatigued when I go to work and I work in a moldy environment, you can, and you worked out a situation where you're, you, you, you fix that and you're, you're not in that bad situation anymore. But if you um, wake up like in, in night terrors uh, or if you wake up uh, in the morning and you feel like something bad happened to you or you had a, a nightmare that where you were being attacked, um, a lot of times these are energetic attacks that have actually happened and they can affect your energy level or even influence you in, in, in uh, your behavior in, in, in some ways. So I, it's important to identify this, the source of the leak and stop it, and then healing the any potential damage that it that it did. So I'm going to stop here, Wendy, and, and get some of your comments about all of this. Sure, I think often forgiveness is important, and also knowing that we've got the right to take care of ourselves and to tend to our own energy and to do what's what's best for us. And just being able to forgive um, what's what's around us, because just because we're in a quote hostile work environment, it doesn't mean other people mean to be hostile. <laughs> They're just doing the best they can too. And I think when we're not meeting hostility with more hostility, again, it's not about being a doormat and getting run over, because you do have to take care of yourself in the best possible ways you can. Uh, but you can also do some things to pre-pave the way and pre-pave the day. So for instance, before I take Henley, my dog, to Dogwood Play Park, where she's going to be around lots of other dogs. Uh, and, it, you know, it's a lovely place. It's wonderful. It's clean. It's well organized. The dogs are well socialized. But when you get a bunch of dogs together, you never quite know what's going to happen. So I simply pre-pave the way and ask uh, the angels to clear that space on behalf of everyone, on behalf of all the dogs, so that they can read each other's signals well, so that the dogs can enjoy being there, so that the people can enjoy being there. And I ask them to uplift the neighborhood that it's in too. Um, so that's something we could do. We could just ask to clear our workspace before we go so that we're not the one having, you know, the, the, like, the life sucked out of us while we're there because we don't realize how much we're clearing the space for everyone else. Right. So that's a way of just kind of pre-paving your way and pre-paving your day that can help preserve your energy. Great advice. So uh, let's let's look at some of these causes that we were talking about uh, in the in the last slide. So, like I said, the, the the ones that are that are etheric or not physical are these uh, what I call louche feeding parasites. So, what is what is louche? L o o s h. It is any kind of low emotion that you experience. Uh, so, anything like um, anger, fear, jealousy. Um, even think confusion and doubt. So these are emotions you don't like. There are actual beings that like that kind of energy that gets generated from those emotions and they can hang around you. They like to hang around areas like uh, uh, bars and, and, and taverns uh, because people who tend to go to those places are drinking, their, their guards are down and they are upset. 
you know, about they're usually drinking their sorrows away, as they say. And, and these loose feeding type beings like to hang out in these areas. You, however, can be minding your own business and, and these things can still attach on, onto you. Um, you can also have living <laughs> parasites. Uh, and that's something that I help with physically. And these things can, can, um, can, can disrupt your health and, and make you lose energy. And it's, it's amazing how a lot of times um, when I'm helping a patient with a physical set of parasites that I have to do some energy work on them to unhook them. So there's, there's some very sophisticated physical parasites that need that extra step. Uh, sometimes with, with some forms of bacteria too. So it's, it's really interesting that there's um, kind of these, these new um, wave of, of uh, bacteria and, and parasites that are, have an energetic component to them. So uh, that's, so contact me if you feel like you've got something like that. Then we get into, into some of the more bizarre things like um, etheric implants, curses, and, and, um, manipulations uh, that etheric non-physical beings can can use to drain a person's energy or feed off of your uh, emotional energy. And then finally, even if you don't have any of these things, sometimes something happened to you in a past life that has that was such a trauma that it is echoing now in your lifetime now. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Wendy will <laughs> speak more, more to this. The, the past life trauma is if that wound, I call it an origin wound, if that wound doesn't get, get healed, if, as Wendy mentioned earlier, if um, forgiveness isn't presented as kind of like a healing salve, then that, that wound can stay. And what I've noticed um, in, in the energy work that I do is, is Let's say a physical, you know, a basic one would be something like if somebody, if you were in battle, and you know, hundreds of years ago, and somebody stabbed you in the abdomen, and you know, that's that's a big trauma, that's a big physical trauma. I tend to notice that when something like that happens, a patient will tend to have some sort of phys physical infirmity in that area of the body. So they might have, um, you know, digestive issues or something like that, or parasites, or Oddly enough, they may have needed surgery in that exact same area, which again creates another wound. So these are things that tend to ripple, and unless they're addressed, um, they will continue in other lifetimes. So the, the idea is to go back to the origin wound, get it healed, get it removed, get forgiveness placed on it, and then you know heal the etheric hole that, that's that's there, and then and then the patient will be fine. Um, some other things that can cause energy leaks, mental and intellectual things, uh, schooling, personal feedback. In other words, the, the feedback you get from your, your family, your friends, the, your workmates, um, people telling you what, what they think of you. And then and other things are media influence. So I'm seeing a lot of people being influenced today by media. So that's everything from television to social media. And it, it, people are getting stressed out by the news they're seeing. You know, there, there's a new war, there's a new disease, there's a new president, there's a new whatever, there's, there's this political party is doing something really horrible and this, you know, and the, but, the, you know, other things are going on. There's always, it seems like there's always a new, well, I mean, you know, Wendy and I have talked about this quite a bit. The, the headlines are always negative news, you know, that, and if you, if you immerse yourself in that, it's going to start draining your energy and unless you're aware and you don't, and you provide some protection for yourself. So in the physical, we, we again talked about this. Uh, the things that can affect your energy are people, places, and electronic devices. So this is one other thing. I just want to, I've mentioned this now for a third time, electronic devices. So there's two things about these electronic devices that affect us. One is their physical radiation. So it's really a good idea. I, I, I think this is something a lot of people know about it, but I really want to hit on it today. Um, we, we tend to carry our phones around everywhere with us. I see people putting them in their pockets all the time. If you don't put any kind of shielding on that, it can cause physical harm to you. It's radiating all the time. If you take your telephone calls and put your phone up to your ear, um, that radiation does not go away. <laughs> like for you know, years and years, actually. So it's better to use things like 
ear, earbuds um, or talk on the speakerphone. Put your phone away from you. Don't sleep next to your phone. Uh, uh, there are many shielding devices that you can put on your phone, things like that. I, I wear a uh, shungite. It's, a, it's a, a stone that actually absorbs radiation. So that's another thing. I've got a, a shungite disc I put on my phone. Um, so anyway, that's, that's just another thing. But the, the, beyond that, looking at the screens, what, what's called you know, the blue light, looking at the screens for a long period of time can start to affect your brain waves and your thought patterns. So it's, it's really not good and it affects your vision as well. So my, my daughter uh, need, needed glasses at the age of like 13 or no, about 15 after she had had a phone. We, we held off until she was 12 years old, but within three years of her having a phone, it affected her vision. She needs glasses now. So that, that's, you know, so these are physical things that um, are being affected by our devices and it, they are, their energy leaking as well. So Wendy, I want to stop here and see if you have any thoughts about a lot. Of, I talked, covered a lot of ground here. Yes. Those are really great points, Greg. Uh, what I use on my phone, it's called an energy dot. Um, and so that's what, that's what I have, but I love your points about just, can you use speakerphone? Can you use uh, earbuds? You know, something so you don't have it right uh -huh. there. It's the same thing. If you do choose to use a microwave, occasionally, um, you know, not, not necessarily the, the best way to heat our food, but I do get it's super convenient. So just don't stand right on top of it. <laughs> you know, you can, you can set the timer for two minutes and walk away from it. You don't need to microwave yourself along with the food. <laughs> what, you know, one other thing I'd like to, thank you for bringing that up. That's a, that's a great point. Another thing that people tend to have on their homes is something called a smart meter. So this is something that's been around now for the past 15 years or so. So if you have, you know, your your water meter tends to be on the outside of your house, um, or your electric meter or your gas meter, all these things now are smart meters. So these are meters that read, you know, how much water is coming into your house, gas, et cetera, uh, you know, electricity. But they're shooting out a beam constantly. So now, it, you know, back in the old days, we would have people who would come to your house and read your meter. Well, now I, I just watched one happen the other day. The, the power company, they just drove by. I saw their car and they stopped by my house. They didn't even get out, but they read my meter from the beam that is constantly shooting out of my house. So I was curious. I read, heard bad things about these, these smart meters and how they can affect your health. So I bought a meter reading a uh, meter reader <laughs> or I, actually what what's the i don't know it's it's a it's a gauge you can buy i bought it on amazon for about 30 dollars to check the you know the electromagnetic electromagnetic radiation that was in my house so i i put it by the um the meters the two smart meters that are on the outside of my house they're blasting you know 30 yards out into my um my front yard but they're also coming backwards into my house within about, you know, five to 10 feet. So, you know, that's our, it's our living room where we sit sometimes, you know? So if you are staying in that smart meter radiation, it's, it's not a good idea. There's a lot of people reporting health trouble from that. And that can, it can wear your energy down for one thing, but it, it can cause other trouble too. Um, so just wanted to mention that. So um, yeah, let, let's uh, let's move on. That's so that's the physical stuff. But as I mentioned earlier, there's all these etheric things that can be bothering you too. You know, psychic attacks and so forth. So, um, all right, let's let's move on here. When and again, these are these are just uh, some some realities, and not you know not everyone is impacted by them. It's different for different people. But I think it's just pointing out the the reasons why it is so important to just take care of yourself and take care of your energy and know how to ground your energy clear your energy raise your vibration and just have good practices and then just just take care of yourself with some with some joy uh, in a way that you know that you deserve it uh, versus doing it in a way where there's a lot of fear behind it because we know it's the energy behind the action and the choices that we make, that's what's going to determine the outcome. So if I'm like, oh my gosh, my phone's going to kill me. I've got to put <laughs> these uh, energy dots on it. I'm not going to get a very good outcome. 
necessarily. So I just was like, oh, okay. So I'm hearing this might be an issue. So I meditated on it and talked with my guides and they said, get these, these smart dots and you only have to buy them once and just have some fun with it and just figure out it came as a pack of three. So I just like talked with my house and talked with the diva of my home and property and said, where should I use these? Where should I place them? And this was just for me, it could be different for different people. It's just getting to know yourself and having some fun taking care of yourself, I think is the best way to look at it. So for me, I placed it on my phone, I placed it on my computer, and I placed it on the Wi-Fi uh, smart um, house box that's downstairs in my uh, hall closet. And you know, yes, we did look at the, the electric boxes and they said, nope, you don't need anything there. I asked them about the smart meters and my guide said, nope, you don't need anything there because I'm fortunate. Mine is placed right outside my garage. So that's where it's coming in is, you know, through this big two car garage. And they said, nope, you don't need to do anything about that. So again, it's just, it's just getting to be able to tune into how do I love myself and how do I take care of myself well and then you just you just let it go you know you know you know what you need to keep doing you know what you can just let go of so right just to just to you know hit your point even harder because if you don't do that and if you stay in fear you know here you are trying to do something to that's good for yourself but if you stay in fear you're going to create an energy leak yourself so just exactly when he had the perfect advice on this is, you know, now that you know that some of these things can cause issues, just buy some protection. And then like when he said, have, have fun with it. You can add your own positive energy to it. It will enhance it, you know, create some magic around it, have some fun. Absolutely. And, 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 and then don't worry about it again. <laughs> exactly. And you may not need to buy anything. You know, this, this isn't a podcast about you need to buy this or buy that. Right. We're just, we're here to help you with your own sovereignty, with your own energy. We're here to help make this trip around the planet this time, this lifetime, uh, hopefully more pleasurable for you, more informed for you, uh, so that you just get to embrace uh, who you really are. So let's go through a couple uh, case studies of some energy leakages. And this, so when we're thinking about people, I'm going to uh, do a couple examples of, of people uh, because we're, we're meant to be in relationship. We're meant to have marvelous relationships with people, but certainly some of them can be challenging. So it's about learning what our own uh, deepest truth is in many ways. So here's some examples from some of my clients. And the people that we tend to have energy leaks with, they're people that we come in contact with a lot. So yes, certainly it can be your coworker, uh, it might be a neighbor, it can be a family member, uh, can be uh, you know, your, own, your own birth family that you were born into. And that's, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty common one um, from birth family. So there was an example of a parent, very, very well-meaning, highly intelligent, uh, you know, very together person in many ways, uh, this, this um, uh, example of a parent. But uh, she, because uh, it's a, a female, she was actually negatively impacting her own child's life path and destiny. And that's a big deal. You know, when you've got someone, um, when you've got a parent who is so um, overbearing and so um, strong-willed and just so imprinting what they think should be done. And they're seeing that child as a reflection of how they show up in the world. They feel like they're being judged for everything. It's that kind of a parent. So it's someone who can be, um, yes, that overused word of, of narcissist where they really think it's, it's, it's all, all about them. And they're just seeing that child not as a separate being, you know, a wonderful being that's uh, loaned to us to get to take care of and nurture for X number of years, and then to just help launch into the world. 
I, you know, it doesn't mean that they're not still our child, but we're meant to help them get to that place where they're as independent uh, as they possibly can be to get out there and live their destiny and live their life path. So this was an example of an energy leak because the way it was showing for the child, even as an adult, uh, this, this child, when they were with this parent, uh, was still just getting zapped, just absolutely zapped because the parent didn't want to uh, let the uh, adult child live their life. And um, as I said, just too much, too much um, overlap between, between the energy fields. These two, these two, uh, two females in this example, these two females were really not sovereign enough. And that's a tricky dance for many people to figure out what is my healthy, adult relationship with my parent. I think that is the journey that a lot of us come here to take. And please, I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your success stories. I'd love to hear how you did um, accomplish that or are accomplishing that because I think a lot of people would love to uh, get some great advice in that area. Because uh, parents um, and children, it can just revert back into like, oh my goodness, why am I acting like a teenager? You know, why does why does my parent trigger me like this? Or oh my gosh, why am I acting like a preschooler? <laughs> why am I just having a meltdown? Uh, because it can just be, you know, so so triggering. And you might be the one uh, doing, depending on your age, you might be the one doing the triggering to your um, child who's now an adult. So it's like, we really have to, to think about that. But that's a great example of an energy leakage that you might not be aware of. So the symptoms again are, if you just feel zapped, depleted, you know, if the mere thought of spending the holidays, the holidays are a tricky time for many people because they can be wonderful, but there can be such high expectations. And a lot of people, uh, enjoy them very much, but some people are just missing uh, people so much that loved ones that have passed on, or they're feeling very lonely uh, because they may not have immediate family or they may not have a lot of friends. And they're just, you know, seeing the Hallmark uh, Christmas channel and just <laughs> feeling very triggered that that's not, that's not what their reality is like at all. Um, so uh, yeah, lot, lots of energy leakages going on this time of the year with, with those uh, holiday gatherings. So any comments on that one, Greg? I'm sure you've seen lots of uh, client, client issues in this area too. Yeah, I've seen exactly that. And um, it, I see it in cordial attachments. So in other words, it looks like a cord where the, a mother and a daughter or mother and a son or even uh, two people who are in a relationship, you know, two significant others, a man and a woman. And um, one time I removed uh, a cordal attachment from a girlfriend. I was working on the, 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 the boyfriend. <laughs> he, had, he had Lyme disease and we were doing some physical work and, and she came into the room and, and was all in, actually she asked if she could be a present during the, the in-person session. Physically or the higher self? Well, it was both. So she, she, First thing, when we started the session, she asked if she could stay in the room. I said, no, it's not a good idea. And then as soon as I began work on the boyfriend, um, I saw her face and I saw that she had a cord attached to his heart chakra. So, I, you know, we removed it and we healed the area and everything. So she came right into the room when the session was over as I was doing the deep brief with the boyfriend. And I had mentioned that um, I'd removed her you know, from, from his energy body. And um, she got all upset. She said, well, of course I am. You know, we're attached. We're, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend. You know, isn't that a good thing? And I said, never. It's, not, it's never a good thing to be physically, you know, entwined in somebody else's um, energy. You can push and pull each other's energy. And it, it, it's, it's tough enough just to get along on your own. <laughs> so it, it's, it's doubly hard to be dealing with somebody else's energy as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. And it doesn't mean that you don't care about someone. It doesn't mean that you're not committed to the relationship and working on it. But um, I like you, Greg, I really think 
it's a big deal and important that we be separate and sovereign in our energy, because isn't that quite the definition of codependence that you just that you just gave, where they're they're literally literally attached. And again, I'm not I'm not criticizing. Uh, it's very very common. I've had many cords uh, um, removed from from myself. I've removed many of them. I've had healers help me. I've had. Uh, archangels and ascended masters help me. So uh, boundaries, <laughs> right. so that we can be healthy and be our best, right. uh, just wonderful, wonderful selves, and just help lift everyone up by that. Yes. Uh, you know, versus this 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 codependence that more often spirals downwards, and where we're attaching via wounds, via attaching through our best. Uh, healthiest, happiest energy. So another example of an energy leak, and this one comes from a past life contract, and it was a past life thousands of years ago. So uh, this is a big deal. Uh, when you think about the many, many, many times that we can choose to incarnate, it can be hundreds, if not thousands of times. So just getting ourselves energetically squeaky clean, uh, getting that getting that squeegee out and, and knowing these uh, techniques and working with someone who can help you with it, it's a big deal. So in this case, a woman was noticing that each time uh, she spoke with a certain individual uh, because they were working with the same um, spiritual teacher. And she was noticing that when she was um, in proximity with this person, either physically, or it could be uh, phone to phone, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't have to be in the same room together, but you're still can even be email text, uh, you know, what whatever. She was noticing that she would go into the encounter with, you know, good energy, plenty of energy. And when she was speaking with other people, she was still fine. But when that one person, and she started to notice the common denominator, if it was this one gentleman, uh, and he was a friend, uh, which made it even harder to extricate it um, all, um, because they had had been um, good, good friends in this lifetime, and also had been very close in this lifetime several thousand years ago. But in that lifetime, several thousand years ago, she had agreed uh, and, you know, we all do the best we can. We, we know what we know at that time. Uh, what's that my, uh, Maya Angelou expression about once we know better, we do better. Um, and she had agreed that she would give energy and be providing energy um, to this man so that he could channel. And it was specifically because she supported and wanted him to be to, to doing the specific channeling. And Nowadays, I would say, gee, you need to be <laughs> providing your own energy to do your own channeling and be, you know, cleansing and clearing your energy to do that. And if you want to talk it through and, you know, share tips and techniques of how to do that or find some ways to up your energy, if you find your own channeling is depleting you, I have questions about that, <laughs> um, you know, rather than, you um, providing energy to this person. So uh, that no longer worked for her. So uh, they had to have several conversations that were not very easy and not very pleasant, um, but she needed to change her boundaries because uh, she was not going to allow herself to be zapped and to be anyone else's spiritual battery pack where she was literally being used and having her energy taken from her, uh, which at first in this lifetime was making her really angry because she didn't understand why it was happening. And then as uh, more realizations came and, and, and you know, kind of peeled, peeled the, the layers to the onion, and he didn't see it as he was doing anything wrong because he was reverting to the old contract and the old habit, and he was reverting to the past life. Um, and he was just used to this shortcut of, I get to take energy from other people and do my channeling slam, bam, done. So rather than working on his own um, energy. So, um, yes, so that's, that's another example of it, um, which is a, a really important thing to understand that we might have, we might have contracts that don't serve us anymore. And you have every right to, uh, 
cleanse and clear those contracts. Yes, we need to uh, learn our lessons and, and forgive and be in gratitude and, and do what we need to do. Um, but if, if a past life, if a contract doesn't serve you, and you might have formed it in this life too, you might have formed it when you were a very young child in this lifetime, because under the age of eight, we just really don't have any filters. So we may have said some things that we really, really meant um, when we were a, a, a younger, um, you know, younger uh, child that just uh, don't, don't serve us well now. And we've got the right to, uh, to change those. So um, yes, that's another, another example. So Greg, any comments on that? No, that's, that's fascinating. Okay, and then the, the third one, Greg, you started to hint at this one. You, you set this one up so well. Um, this is another common one that can come up is when people are physically as well as emotionally um, intimate, uh, that, that's a big, big deal. I mean, that is our, our highest, uh, holiest relationship in many ways, whether you know, it's a spouse, it's boyfriend, girlfriend, lover, what, whatever label um, you want to use on that, whatever the, whatever the scenario is. But uh, there was an example of, of a gal and she was no longer uh, in contact, no longer in touch um, with, with a former boyfriend, a former lover. Uh, but yet, because uh, he was not happy that that relationship had ended, he still wanted and enjoyed getting attention. And he was willing to behave badly. <laughs> he, would, he would accept, he would take even negative um, attention just to get any attention, because that really fed him. It fed his ego uh, to still be able to get, get a rise um, out of her, to still... Uh, you know, get her angry, get her upset, get her sad, whatever. It's kind of like louche in a way, Greg, like you were describing of feeding off, feeding off the lower uh, vibrational energies. Yeah. And because he was very psychic um, and because they had shared a lot of uh, telepathy together, not just on the other side, but in this lifetime, uh, he was able to uh, be a, a dream weaver, let's call it. And he was able to insert himself into her dreams. Uh, even though she did not want this, um, she was not agreeing to this. And sure, we can occasionally uh, dream about someone that you know, we haven't thought about in years. And that's just fine. I'm not talking about that. You know, there's some, there's some little energy to release. There's something that the subconscious is bubbling up to the conscious state uh, or, you know, there's some, there's some little, little lesson or something to let go of there. And that's just fine. But I'm talking about regularly and it being very vivid and there being just a lot going on um, with these. So, um, and, and this was someone who even knew how to lucid dream. So she even knew how to take control of her dreams right as they were happening. Uh, which is a skill that that um, you know people can can learn over time, um, or may already be naturally just a, a lucid lucid dreamer, and but to have this going on not okay, not okay when it's unwanted and you've spoken up and said, hey, I'm sovereign, you're not welcome here. You know we're complete. If there's anything you need to say, say it now, and then we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. You know even in the dream time. So she had cleared him at multiple levels um, uh, from, from her, her lifetime, really in a very peaceful, uh, caring, kind way with a lot of communication because they both had needed that uh, to get that closure. But then to have this um, continue, um, she got to the point where she saw it as a psychic attack. Um, and that's, that's not okay. Um, and it just was, uh, as I said, it was perturbing. Um, and it just, uh, it just, no one wants to feel something's being done to them. You know, we need to be able to stand in our power and to be, uh, to be in our own, uh, energy field. And we need to feel, we need to feel safe at night. We need to feel that we're, we're just being nurtured and replenished and we need to feel, that our home and our bedroom um, is a place of safety. 
and unwanted energy is not welcome there. It's just that plain and simple. Um, so she had to do some real work to get this resolved. Um, and it went on for years, literally years. And then the way she knew she'd finally graduated from it was he made one more uh, end run into her uh, dreams. And she just literally uh, turned it into a lucid dream and kind of stood there with her hand on her hips and went, huh, look at that. Mm -hmm. There just was like no emotion about it, no energy, no emotion, just recognized it, turned her back on it. And then he was no longer getting any reaction. He was no longer getting any charge at all from it. So there was no longer, there was no longer an energy leak because uh, he had been just deeply corded uh, both in her heart and in her gut also. Um, so it just, uh, that just, that just ended it uh, again uh, in a very kind, in a very peaceful way. This is not about going to war. Uh, it's quite the opposite. It's about really fully uh, owning your power um, and your sovereignty and your own beautiful, beautiful energy and up-leveling it. So a couple of resources, uh, Dr. Judith Orloff, who is an MD uh, physician, she wrote the Empath Survival Guide, as well as many other books. Um, and you can also listen to her interviews. Um, it, you know, if you just don't feel like you've got time to read it, do the audiobook version or listen to some of her interviews. Uh, she's been featured in quite a few uh, films, also different documentaries. Uh, so she's a great, uh, great speaker on this topic, because of course, empaths and high sensitives uh, tend to uh, really uh, have issues with energy leaks uh, much more often um, than the than the general general population. So it's just learning to manage our gift so that our gift is not uh, a burden. And there's also a 21 day guided meditation series called Break the Grip of Past Lovers. I wish this was for both men and women. I would love to find one for the guys. So please, if anyone can find um, something similar to this for men, please share it with me. I'd love to know it, to know about it, uh, to be able to refer clients to it uh, because I have a lot of um, clients come to me where there, there's definitely um, some, some, some wounding um, and some lessons that are being completed um, with, with uh, romantic partners and former partners. So what this 21 day guided meditation is, uh, you purchase it uh, one time, you then own it, and you can go through it on whatever time. You don't have to do one a day for 21 days because sometimes we're busy um, or we just feel like, oh, I'm ready to take a little break from this because it's really powerful. And I had resisted um, doing this program when I first heard about it because I've done it. I've done it myself um, multiple times. And it's not about, uh, ladies, it's not about being a man hater. That is not what <laughs> break the grip of past lovers means. What it's really about is about everything I've been talking about today. It's about feeling great being you. It's about tuning into your own energy and applauding it. Uh, and because it's for women, it's about tuning into your goddess energy. It's about tuning into the pelvic bowl um, and just really getting your, your lower chakras strong and then working your way um, on up through there. And it's very, um, it's beautifully done. Um, and as I said, you can just listen to it multiple times. Um, I've been using it uh, to go back to just as a good resource because I've been uh, recently, I've started dating again. So I just knew at some point I was going to get triggered. <laughs> and I kind of knew, well, I've kind of got my toolkit. And that's what's so great to have and to have um, people like Greg and I that, you know, you can go to and, and do a session with and just get yourself feeling uh, wonderful again. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about protection and pivot off of what Wendy is saying about, you know, getting your energy right and making sure that you're protected in a way that's not going to battle and that, that way that's healthy and happy and upbeat and um, positive energy. So one of the things I recommend doing on a daily basis, you can do it first thing in the morning, definitely do it right as you're going to bed, is ask out loud for protection from 
the, the, the guardian, your guardian angels. And the best one that I know of is Archangel Michael. This, this archangel has been around for thousands of years, you know, predating all religions. And his, his aim is to protect humanity. So all you have to do is say, Archangel Michael, please protect me now. And uh, that protection lasts about 18 hours. So it's, you can't say Archangel Michael, protect me forever. I mean, you can say it, but it's still only going to last about 18 hours. Um, it's, it's funny because I, I, I do a protection ritual prior to most of my, my uh, energy sessions. So I, I say them out loud and the client hears it. And one, one client said that to me one day, why don't you just say, you know, protect me forever and ever. I said, well, is it, that's not how it works. <laughs> but I, it's a, I it's say a free it. will. It's a free will planet. So, yeah, right. You, you have to do some work, you know, you can't just say, Oh, put, you know, put yourself in a bubble and, you know, like the boy in the bubble in that 1970s TV show, <laughs> you, you have to experience life. So anyway, but uh, that said, we need some extra help from the archangels. Archangel Michael is available. I usually say, I usually ask, ask out loud prior to going to bed. Here's another one that came from a, a, a book I read recently about um, a healer in um, Cyprus named Daskalos. Uh, it comes from the book um, called Fire in the Heart. It's called the Five Pointed Star um, Meditation. Excuse me, you can, uh, for those who are watching the video, you can see this is um, an illustration of the Vitruvian man, the five point that looks like uh, Leonardo da Vinci's drawing of the man with his arms and legs outstretched. What you do is you visualize yourself in that pose and you would just flip this image around so that you're, it's from your point of view. And what you do is you, you draw a line in your mind from the top of your head straight down, one line straight down to the right of your right foot. And then from the right of your right foot, you draw another straight line to the left of your left hand, then straight across to the right of your right hand and back down to the left of your left foot. And then from your left foot, back to the top of your head that creates a five point pointed star and again i've had patients say well can't you just um you know imagine the star and then put your your energy body in it no it's the drawing of the star that creates the protection it's like you're building walls around yourself you know building armor so this is a very effective way of creating so this is what i recommend doing if you um know you're going to be encountering somebody who is you know, caused some energy draining situations in the past. Um, so you draw, you know, just close your eyes for it. And it only takes seconds to do this. Do that. And then you'll be in, in your sp spiritual armor. It works really well. If you don't have time to do that, just um, in, envision yourself in this golden egg of protection or a white orb of protection around you. Again, you know, kind of like Wendy and I have talked about this in past episodes, you know, shields up. You can do this very quickly. You, you know, if you're literally on the other side of a door and there's somebody who's a troublemaker on the other side, you know, you have to interact with that person. Just close your eyes for a second, take a deep breath, put your shields up, and then walk into the room, knowing that your, your energy is contained. Um, well, you can also wear protection. So I, like I was talking about, I wear uh, shungite and things like that. There's different kinds of crystals that you can wear. It can help enhance and protect your energy. When you and I, we, I'd refer to the episode we did on crystal healing. We, we talked about protective crystals um, several, several episodes ago. Um, and then, you know, as Wendy said earlier, uh, if, if you feel like you've got kind of like a chronic energy leak, or if you feel like you've been attacked, or if you feel like you've just got something that you, you can't explain, an odd feeling that you've been starting to feel, um, then contact us, uh, you know, and we can help you remove these these attachments, these uh, entities, or these implants, whatever they are, so that you can get along with your life and 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 you won't be bothered by these things anymore. And then Wendy mentioned also space clearing. Um, so uh, she was talking about preparing, uh, which I love that visualization. You know, prior to going to the dog park with your dog, you. You you clear the space. That's that's a really great idea. You in your the space that you're in now. Of course, you can do things like smudging with sage. Uh, there's specific tuning forks that you can use. Uh, there's things like Palo Santo, uh, Copal. All these things you can burn in a room and put them in the four corners of the room and 
you can do incantations, toning, uh, you can say out loud, you know, archangels protect this room. This stuff has a physical effect. I, the first time I started doing smudging and then uh, tuning forks, my daughter, who was at the time only like six years old, she didn't know what was going on. She walked into the room or ran into the room with her friend and into a room I had just cleared. And, <laughs> and they both said, it feels great in here. And they both started doing cartwheels in the room. <laughs> All of a sudden, it oh, was like, that's so sweet. Wow. How, I mean, they had no preconceptions. They were like, why does it feel so good in here? They, they felt it because their energies was so high. So that, you know, kids who are that age are really in tune with energy. So I couldn't believe how immediate that was. I thought it felt great, but they seeing them doing cartwheels just that, that brought the room up even more. It was really cool. So Wendy, do you have anything to add well, to this? That's just, that's such a great story. And also you can put mirrors around you. I like to put mirrors around me facing out and I use them to shine the best of my own energy out to others. And those mirrors, they also, they just turn toward me when they need to, and they bring me uh, light and, and, and strength and they bring me what they need to. And they're also very protective because if someone is trying to project their nonsense onto you or just trying to yeah, really, um, you know, slime, slime you with things that you don't need to be involved <laughs> with, you know, yell at you, whatever it is, just uh, take you down. Those mirrors, I find they just hold and you don't always have to have a reaction. You know, you can just, just keep on going um, and just, just keep on going and know that those mirrors are going to return to them what's, what's theirs. Um, so, yeah, those mirrors I find very, very helpful because mirrors increase the light and they show the truth and they show the clarity. And I don't have to do a darn thing with them other than I work with them uh, in the morning and then I know they'll swivel with each, each way that they need to go. They'll just automatically uh, swivel. So I've used those for years uh, and really uh, find those helpful. And a lot of my clients do too. It's so whatever works for you. It's, it's about your visualization. Uh, as Greg said, you know, the egg, the orb, the bubble. Um, some people use um, like, like netting. Like if you've ever seen at the playground, those big kids climbing structures where it's like the, the big um, spider, spider web, you know, they use, they use that. Um, and it's just, it's just about giving yourself some space, some grace so that you can be centered and just really enjoy being yourself. And when you get these energy leaks resolved and when you get your, your energy where it's meant to be and just get steady there, anything and everything is possible. It's just amazing. I had the amazing experience of doing what's called timeline jumping um, a couple weekends ago, and I did not expect it, um, but I knew something was very different. I was at a retreat for the weekend and it's with a group of friends that I've done multiple retreats with, but all of a sudden I was very disoriented as to time. And I'm one of those people, I don't even need a clock. I just know what time it is. I'm very in tune with time, which kind of makes sense for a past life regressionist because I work with time a lot and I remember how to time travel and time shift. But all of a sudden I was like looking at my friends and I said, what day is it? what time is it? I was like looking outside to see if it was daylight or evening. And I picked up my phone and the clock on my phone was going crazy. And it just, it just was like spinning and spinning. So even my iPhone was showing. And I asked my guides, I said, what's happening? They said, your timeline jumping. And I jumped into a more positive reality for the rest of this lifetime. So that was just such a big deal. I mean, you can hear it. it's just, um, it just brings me to tears yeah. to know that it absolutely is possible that you can resolve your health issues. You can know your purpose and feel that you're living your purpose. You can get the resources to live your purpose. You can uh, find those uh, wonderful relationships. Uh, all those things are absolutely possible. And if you had told me that 10 years ago, 
I would have, as much as I tried to be a positive person and, you know, one foot in front of the other, that I don't know what to call it, that Yankee work ethic. I'm mi mixing my analogies here. <laughs> I would have been like, um, would have been like, what are you talking about? It just, it wouldn't have landed for me. So to actually see that I timeline jumped and my friends were kind of looking at me and they said, you're shifting, you're moving, something's going on. Um, but it just, like I said, to see the physical representation of it, even on my phone, that my phone just, and it was like, wow, that was a timeline jump. So it's a big deal. And we are delighted to help you do things like this because Greg and I both really, we do our best to, um, to walk the talk. We're not talking from a theory standpoint. We both have healed significant health issues. Uh, we have dealt with gnarly uh, relationship issues. Uh, we have dealt with big uh, financial uh, surprises, shall I say. Uh, <laughs> and we're still here and we're just happier and healthier than ever. So uh, Greg, I think you probably had a timeline shift too when you finally really resolved uh, the line. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I had something like a timeline shift just happen in my office, in my in my healing uh, room, uh, my treatment room. I just, Recently? Yes, like two weeks ago. So, okay. So, and so it had to do with my phone too. So I, the, what you okay. said- so it's, it's the it's the astrology, it's the collective. Yeah. The the moments are here now. This is there's never been a better time than to do sessions and to do your own work because right. the collect we we are really we're getting in sync with Mother Earth because she's yeah. just rising and rising. No, the veil is thinning and all kinds of wild things are happening. So I was doing it. So I I don't know why I, I did this, but in my office, I suddenly one day, you know, so, so I, I do healing sessions with the, there's a, you know, massage table, a treatment table and, you know, patients are lying yes. on the table. And I, so I stand off to the side prior to the session and do, you know, some uh, protection rituals. And, but I also scan the person's body before I even touch them. Um, so I started noticing I was facing a different direction. So I, I intuitively, I bought a a rug that's about two and a half feet in di diameter, that's a compass. I just thought I wanted to pay attention to the four, four cardinal points while I was doing this. So I bought that about a year ago and I calibrated it before every session. So I take my phone and I lay it down on the, on the actual carpet and uh, <clears throat> there's a compass um, app that comes with your phone. It just comes with it. Everybody has one. So, you know, for years, for a year or more, I've been, I, I click the, the compass app, you know, and so the, the car, the rug hasn't changed much, but, you know, people walk on it. So it gets nudged a few degrees, you know, so I have to calibrate it. So prior to a really big session with, with a patient, I, I set my phone down and just like you, Wendy, the, the compass was backwards. <laughs> so north was pointing south, east was pointing west. Well, we know west. the poles are reversing. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I, the patient was in the bathroom, came into the room and I said, look at this. And she said, what am I seeing? I, I said, well, you know, the, here's the carpet. This is where North really is. But my phone is showing that it's South. And she said, well, is it, are you sure, you know, did you get the carpet, you know, turned the wrong way? I said, I, that carpet has not, I've made sure that carpet has not moved, but a few inches. So anyway, we did the session the patient had an amazing, we both shared a vision while on the table. Now this is a patient who was like where you were 10 years ago, Wendy. She, she was open-minded, but you know, she came into these sessions saying, I don't care about past lives. I don't want to hear about any of this crazy stuff. I'm just here. I have tuning forks. She's like, I like your tuning forks. <laughs> right. And I said, all right, no problem. To, you know, she but, didn't. She didn't want the full woo. She wanted yeah, the partial exactly. woo. Well, now she's <laughs> she's woo to the third power because you know, <laughs> as we as we were doing the session, she she's you know she she started describing an entity coming in, who by the way was Jesus, <laughs> and and she, that's all she had to say. I saw it it coalescing above her, and then. I said, you don't even have to describe what you're seeing because I see it. And there's, it was a unique component about it. There was a shape that we both saw 
And um, it was just fascinating. Anyway, that so the session ended. I put the compass back down, you know, my phone back down. It was back to normal. So we had a magnetic anomaly in, in the office two weeks ago. So, you wow. know, these, these wild things are happening now. And I, I, I enjoy them. I, I love it. And, um, you know, this is, it's, it's fun to experience them with other people who, especially ones who had been somewhat skeptical before. <laughs> yeah, she was like, <clears throat> you know, never a dull moment when I come in here, you know, <laughs> like, yep, that's true. Anyway, fascinating stuff, Wendy. Let's, uh, I want to move on to your, your next slide. Sure. Here. So again, this is meant to be uplifting and you have got the power to uh, resolve these things and to just have life get better and better and better. So what is the solution to energy leaks? Of course, it's that daily energy management um, that we've referred to several times. And I did link the two episodes. Those were two of the first episodes we did, Greg, yeah, uh, nice. way back when in, in uh, 2020, June of 2020. And you're welcome to uh, look at those. So please just go to wakingupspiritually.com and you can click on the broadcast tab and you will find them there. Um, they're on page one. And also just keep your faith larger than your fears. Because yes, we all have certain fears that can rise up and you've just got to got to witness it. It doesn't do any good to try and deny it or shove it down because it's just going to come up bigger and more at the most inconvenient time. <laughs> so might as well just deal with it the day that it comes up. I mean, you can't always do it exactly in the moment. I try to, but you can't always exactly in the moment. And just trust, you know, just that, that trust and that faith, uh, just, just growing that uh, versus uh, feeding, feeding, the, feeding the bear or poking the bear or feeding the fears. And also just the importance of loving yourself first versus pleasing, because it's really not your responsibility to please others. And it's, it's an endless, exhausting game that will cause energy leakages. And really, uh, it doesn't mean you don't do kind things for people. It doesn't mean you don't help other people. But I'm talking about trying to please them as a way of being accepted. Um, or to, you know, placate. And it's not your job. It's not your job. You really, you really can't please others. So <laughs> well, I think we Billy just, Joel sang a song and said something about don't go change in to try to please me. So. Yes, yes, that was one of his. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That. Exactly. And just to speak kindly to yourself uh, and to others as much as you can just, you know, take, take a breath. Uh, when, when, when you're in the moment, and just just uh, try and center yourself and, and speak kindly to yourself and to others just goes such a such a long way. And also, again, this is the overcommitment time of the year. So just don't do anything that doesn't feel right. Don't do, uh, you know, 50 million things because you think you should. Um, this may um, sound like a, 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 a funny thing to give up, but I just stopped sending physical uh, Christmas cards and a Christmas letter because I had done it for years and I was just raised to do that. And you're supposed to do that. And I looked at it a couple of years ago. I'm like, do I enjoy this? I really don't. I really don't. It's like, I would rather, uh, I, I tend to set up um, phone calls with people that I don't get to talk with very often. I do that in December instead. And just with, you know, a couple, couple different uh, friends that I don't don't talk with very often, and it's much much more satisfying for me. So just you know, do what do what feels right for you. And again, we talked about um, avoiding people who drain your energy. If you can't avoid them, manage your energy. You can absolutely manage your energy because yes, sometimes you do want to go to the family gathering or a certain uh, you know big big gathering or party, and you know that there's you know. One or, one or two there who, who just you're, you're not the best fit with. <laughs> um, and also the importance of just ignoring opinions that take you down. And for me, that's the news. Um, I had to completely opt out of the news. Other people aren't meant to do that. Um, you know, Greg and I have talked about that quite a bit, but just uh, opinions. Uh, why do we put such weight in other people's opinions. Um, it's a way of giving away our power. 
Uh, so just just taking that taking that back and uh, just uh, being able to uh, you know be in nature and just just uh, bloom exactly as you are. Um, so that's what I wanted to uh, summarize with. Very nice. Well, Wendy, this is the end of our broadcast for the year 2022. Yes, it's been a pleasure to be broadcasting with you this year for you know two years likewise plus. greg and thank you so much to our listeners we just really appreciate um all of you uh please do join us on january 16th will be our next waking up spiritually and we're working on the content for that um it may be uh, uh a year preview uh to do with astrology and numerology so greg and i are working on that please join us on facebook in the waking up spiritually group and our website, wakingupspiritually.com. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and you'll see the you'll see the link, the link here. And certainly uh, rate and review us on Apple iTunes um, on the app would be so appreciated because that helps people find us. And then via YouTube or um, or or uh, Apple iTunes or whatever podcast app you like, as you know, then you just automatically get the little reminder when there's a new, a new uh, episode that comes up. And join Greg uh, on his website. You can read about his book there and the wonderful programs that he offers. Highly recommend Sessions with Greg, as well as The Gratitude Curve, his book. And you can find him at Greg, G-R-E-G-G, Kirk, K-I-R-K, dot com. Or uh, please join me um, on my website, which is my full name, Wendy Rose Williams, and it's also a dot com. And you can request a complimentary 15 minute phone appointment with me there to see if I might be of service to you. I am a past life regressionist as well as certified spiritual teacher and Reiki master energy healer. So again, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And here is to a wonderful uh, year coming up. God bless and see you next year. Bye-bye.